1971, audiences had never seen anything like The French Connection. It came out the same year as Dirty Harry, though those two films are very stylistically distinct all of the same. And in the years since The French Connection, modern audiences and younger cinephiles still find themselves watching the film and thinking, wow, this is grand. What happened to films? Here's the thing. Quite difficult and contentious, fairly controversial to illustrate, to compose, produce a film such as The French Connection. The French Connection freely depicts police officers acting ruthless and, and even fairly you know, intimidating and thuggish in an attempt to uncover the suspects of a proposed drug trafficking ring, which ends up being very true, obviously. Although this sort of, not glamorizing, but the likability of otherwise potentially flawed police officers, you know, not angels, not saints by any means, it's the kind of thing which was considered reactionary. Well, the main motivations for doing so were kind of political reactionary attacks against the counterculture, such as what we saw with Dirty Harry and films inspired by Dirty Harry, such as uh, Death Wish, perhaps. I mean, that's not a cop movie, to be fair, the Digilani film, but, but the cops were implicit with, with Kersey's madness there. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is films such as The French Connection, which employed that kind of almost, uh, you know, documentary angle-esque... Um, employment of new Hollywood slash new wave tropes, which had become more abundant in Europe and world cinema, uh, the kind of festival circuit in the 60s, but in the early 60s, it gradually became more abundantly realized within the context of American Hollywood films as well. And Dirty Harry and French Connection are two superlative examples of this being realized from two younger film... Well, Don Siegel wasn't a younger filmmaker, although he, for Dirty Harry, although well, Clint Eastwood was... was Clint Eastwood apparently helped ghost direct the film and his style was, was more suited to to the, this world. But also Don Siegel having experience in kind of lower budgeted kind of noir pictures and sort of stylized, edgy, um, you know, bizarre Ernest Hemingway adaptations in the earlier 60s in The Killers. Hemingway? Well, Siegel's style really suited New Hollywood. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is in fact, it was New Hollywood through and through. And French Connection employing, you know, you, you know how old Hollywood cop films are shot, right? Kind of, we have some sets and we have the camera sitting back. The audience doesn't think about the fact that there's a camera there. They're not supposed to. And we just watch the action play out like it's on the stage. Whereas the French connection involves you in the moment. And you know when a television camera puts you right in the moment and you're not thinking, oh, there's a cameraman sitting there. You're just thinking, oh, wow, I'm there. My, this is a portal from my living room into the action where they're interrogating these prisoners or where they're interviewing the suspects on the scene of a, of a fire or whatever it is. They employ these documentary-esque techniques in order to create a greater involvement with the moment. And then you, they're so seamless, though, and so manicured so well paced and edited that you don't think of it as like quasi documentary in the same way that you think of something like and they're more explicit in those cases something like Peter Watkins or the contemporary mockumentary format or in um even when a lot of sitcoms do the mockumentary thing now after The Office uh, the UK had but even if the US office after a while they're not acknowledging the cameras it's just an aesthetic choice it's not with the floaty cameras it's not like you meant to think oh it's a documentary even but it's not seamless there obviously you still think wait a minute why is the camera shaking i thought this was is this documentary or not anyway the french connection this is i think this is really and, and you know everyone knows about that car chase there's a lot of reckless behavior employed to actually capture that car chase sequence and to so candidly demonstrate illustrate um, police procedural investigation so uh, pointedly in a kind of matter-of-fact manner. You either politicize it as good or you demonstrate it as, as kind of brutish and wicked. You don't have this kind of fly-on-the-wall kind of benign alien observing humanity approach that the French connection is closer to. It, at, that, at that, it's not one of the existential sort of fair like you might see from some of the Charles Bronson pictures he made in Europe around this time or, say, The Getaway with Steve McQueen, directed by Sam Peckinpah, indeed, Sam Peckinpah, period. Although, what it is, is an attempt to tell a story about what happened from the, with the motivator being curiosity 
about the story, about what happened, and what cinema as a medium is capable of in enhancing this story, in making you feel like you're a part of the story more so than it could via text. It's cinematic modernism coupled with a desire to translate law enforcement tales and stories, events, as vividly and as effectively, effectively as possible. The two police officers who inspired the characters of Popeye Doyle and Ray Scheider's character, I have to just look that up beforehand, I didn't. They consulted on the film and they were very happy with the finished result. Even though there was a scene in which Popeye Doyle, iconically, it's, it's in the poster, shoots a man in the back of the neck as he's attempting to get away, a seemingly unarmed man, Friedkin always points out how the police officer who inspired Popeye Doyle's character, he was on set, he was there when that scene was shot, and he didn't object to it. He understood that this is what happens sometimes. And it's not a, it is depicted as kind of a violent, horrifying moment. It's not this, this glorious you know, murder of a criminal. It's this kind of Popeye Doyle at the, you know, losing his temper and losing control and, 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 and shooting a man rather than having to bother continue chasing him to try and apprehend him. It's an honest depiction of cops and robbers, not a romantic one. Stylized, but that's only so you can feel the impact of what that sensory rush is, what that does to the human, the cop or the robber participating in that kind of timeless chase. So good movie. Free of any bizarre reactionary claptrap, which some 70s cop films, certainly, I was going to say, sometimes in the United States and certainly in a place like Italy, for example, we had the Umberto Lenzi special a couple of months ago now. It makes the French Connection one of the finest and most impressive police films, not just of the 70s, but of all time to this day. Not my very favourite William Friedkin film, but certainly one of his best. Thanks again, my good and dear friends. Rest in peace, William Friedkin. Actually, there is some degree to which The French Connection offers something subjective and not necessarily fly on the wall. Its characters, its two lead characters, think of themselves as heroic and right and just. And so they are angled in a way wherein we see how they imagine themselves as they're enacting their investigation and the villains are depicted as opportunistic slimy and kind of smugly proud of themselves as they go about um enabling and operating their drug ring we see how those two factions see themselves because that tremendously influences how they behave anyway and so it's not fly on the wall in that it's the bird's eye view and everything's kind of unglamorized or just a smaller part in a wider wider array of chaotic and vaguely associated events. It's fly on the wall in that events are depicted as they are and the cops are depicted as they perceive themselves and then they go about their behavior. The criminals, as they perceive themselves, the robbers, drug dealers in this case, they go about their behavior. But there's not this, this pretension of either depicting it as this battle between good and evil, as many police films have you know, tended to be, let's say, especially around this time in the kind of Nixon Ford era, perhaps. But also from that, that world wherein you're, um, you're depicting everything as kind of needlessly nihilistic and, and grotesque or, or godless. The French connection believes in archetypes. It is Jungian, although it seeks to depict them as, as is rather than as one which would which we prefer or desire to see supersede the other. And I'll end the video here just before I say anything else too silly. We don't want to get all Jungian here if we don't have to. Thanks again, my good and dear friends. Appreciate it very, very immensely. A fly on the wall film storyline which acknowledges the prominence of archetypes even outside the world of fiction in human behavior.
Yeah, that might have been kind of silly of me to say. Oh, well.